When I'm training for professional competitions, men and women always ask me for advice. To women, I say push yourself harder than you ever have before and go beyond your comfort zone. Focus on your goals. Men, if I am willing to push myself to become Mr. Olympia in 2022, then I only have one thing to say to you. Bring your A game. Here we go again. Hey all my Crimsonites and welcome to the Crimson Cure channel where we embrace our femininity, increase our womanly values and celebrate our brothers. So join me on our feminine journey to learn, heal and grow. Hey there my Crimsonites and welcome to the Crimson Cure channel. I am your host, femininity coach and author of the Crimson Cure and this is my perspective so what we're talking about today um, is black women. Listen, we are masters of the mask. Okay. And this might not be exactly what you think it's going to be. Okay. Not only are we masters of the mask, but we also, a lot of us believe everything we see on social media and TV and everybody else. And I don't understand that because we're supposed to be grown, but still believe everything you see on TV and on social media and everything. But anyway, the thing that I'm talking about, I want to go ahead and show you a, a, a really quick video on, we revisiting the story a little bit of Chesley Christ, which is the young lady who self-deleted um, just recently. She was the winner uh, Miss USA in 2019, and so I'm gonna show y'all a real quick video, and then I'm I got I gotta go in. So so let me go ahead and share my screen, so you guys can see this nonsense, and then I gotta cook. Play with this beautiful queen, because nobody who is depressed who wants to kill themselves has this many beautiful photos, just loving their self, loving their beauty, their body, just embracing life. This is what I see, a beautiful queen who will not kill herself. And then I read this article, though there is no confirmation if Chris was having any issue. In October, 2019, she spoke for World Mental Health Day on Facebook. She has said, I do a lot to make sure that I maintain my mental health. And the most important thing that I did is talk to a counselor. She's really easy to talk to. She gives me great strategies, especially if I'm sad or happy or have a busy month ahead of me. When I'm not talking to my counselor, I spend time at the end of every single day to just decompress. I unplug, I shut off my phone, I don't answer messages. I just sit and watch my favorite movies. That just sounds like normal behavior to me. And then it goes on to say, in 2020 also, she addressed mental health issues and told the Hilltop, there are three things that I, I'm doing with regard with my self-care. Number one, I try to set a regular schedule so my alarm rings every day at 645. I know that I'm getting up and I'm starting my day. Two, I try to set very clear boundaries. So even though I'm at home and I've got my computer my, and my phone with me, I'm done answering emails at six o'clock. I'm not responding to emails. It's over. Before adding, I have a regular workout schedule that keeps my body healthy and my mind sharp. Does that sound like somebody who just hated the world, who just couldn't stand life anymore, who just hated, just was just so miserable and sad and depressed? Not to me, not at all. I need to see video footage. I wanna know who was up there with her. I don't, I don't think she was by herself. She's on a 29th terrace and she jumps off. There's not too many black successful women 
that kill themselves. I've only found she was the fourth one in like years. And I mean years. This is not something that a successful, beautiful, talented, gorgeous, outgoing queen does. I need answers. I need you to do a thorough investigation and see what, what happened to this queen. Because I do not think she killed herself. At all. Okay. And for anybody listening to that, that was shaking their head like, yeah, that's not how depression is. Wrong answer. Wrong answer. If you have, ne if you are within the sound of my voice and you have never battled the demon called major league depression with self-deletion idea ideations, then I'm glad you've never faced it. I'm glad you've never done it. And I hope to God that you never do have to fight that demon. But if you've never done it, please don't try to speak on it. If you've never battled that or not currently battling that, please don't try to speak on it. Because this is not a movie. Depression does not look like oh, the whole world is against me. It's not about hating the world. It's not about hating life. It's not about hatred at all, necessarily. It's about the little voice inside your head that's sometimes not that little that tells you everything you do, everything you are, everything you were, will be, are currently, is worthless and useless and it is and and the world will be better off without you your family your friends your spouse your children your mama your dad the whole world would benefit if you were gone that's what that's what major depression feels like that's what it feels like and it is relentless the regimen that that lady read um is a common thing that therapists give not only to anybody sometimes, but they give to a person who has, who's suffering with major depression because major depression typically comes with anxiety and anything can spark your anxiety. Usually them two things go hand in hand. You have high anxiety. Anxiety comes about when things are unknown, when you don't have control, when you think that things can spiral out of control and, and you don't know what's going to happen to you. And, and it is many times an irrational and an illogical fear of the unknown of things that may not be unknown or that things, even if they are unknown, would be very small on the consequence scale and not very consequential. It's not like something major catastrophe going to happen if you don't know the outcome of this particular thing. So in order to quell that, a therapist usually gives a person suffering from depression and anxiety a schedule that they must stick to, which removes, for the most part, the irrational fear of the anxiety. If I know what's coming next, then there, is, there aren't any surprises. If I know that I'm done answering stuff at six o'clock, if things didn't come to me before that, then they're not about to come to me now because I'm not going to entertain any messages or anything. If I'm, you know what I'm saying? A lot of times that's part of the coping that, that a therapist will tell you to do if you're depressed with anxiety. They'll tell you to start scheduling your stuff so that everything doesn't merge together for you and then stoke that anxiety fire to a point where sometimes you can't, you can't get it down. Like you can't get the anxiety. The anxiety happens. It happened in your body and it happened in your mind. People will fidget. They'll talk. They'll walk. They'll do all kinds of stuff. They'll have little ticks and quirks. You know what I'm saying? Anxiety sometimes can be a paralyzing fear where they can't move out of the spot. Sometimes, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's if you know, you know. And, and I'm sorry if you're the person who's gone through this and you do know what I'm talking about, my prayers to you, right? Because this is not, it's, it's not funny. It's not a movie. It's not what you think it is. Depression doesn't look 
like how it looks like on television. It doesn't at all. Depression looks like those pictures, those beautiful pictures where she's smiling and she's chilling and you, you talk to your family. And that's what depression be looking like because we're trying to not only be normal, appear normal to other people, we're actually trying to feel normal inside of ourselves which is why we do what we believe normal people would do in certain situations. We would, you would call somebody or you would go out sometimes, or you would, you know what I'm saying? You would have some interaction with somebody that, that doesn't center on how you, well, how you feel. We lie about it. We actively lie about it. If somebody say, Oh, how you feel? We say, Oh, I'm okay. I'm doing good. We do not be doing good. When you are depressed, you are not doing good. Nine times out of 10, you're not doing good. Sometimes you do have better days than others, but that all, that's all relative to the depression itself, right? Better days might just mean the day where that voice that's telling you to delete is not so strong that day, where the coping mechanism might have worked the medication might have actually worked that day or whatever. You might even have a series of days that's not so bad. And it's like, oh, okay, maybe I can do this. Maybe I can go through life a little bit, right? The breakdowns, when you're suffering from major depression, you do have breakdowns. You break down all the time. You just don't do it in front of people. You have break. You have mental breaks. You have crying fits. Some people do self-harm. You have these mental and emotional outbursts where you cry, you scream, you talk to yourself, you tell your th yourself horrible things, all of the things that's manifesting in your head, you actually let them come out of your mouth. But you do that at a time and in a place where no one's around. So no one can witness you doing that because you know that people aren't going to get it, that they don't understand the depth of your depression, or at least that's one of the, that's one of the, the, the cycles of depression. That's one of the things that you got to believe in order to stay in depression. You, you have to have a firm belief. And unfortunately it's easy to do to have a firm belief that even if people cared about what you were going through, they were not able to help you not go through it they're not able to so you you can feel yourself time spiraling and then you will get to a point where you are spiraling and you try to do that hidden and then you try to recover after the spiral and why do you try to recover after the spiral because you know you gotta go work you know people are gonna talk to you you know people are gonna ask about you you know people are going to want you to come through for them and be normal for them because they don't they don't know that you going through it. I read an article where her mom was saying, I didn't even know she was going through that. Okay. I didn't even know she was feeling like that because this young lady was able to ma master her mask. And you do, the, the longer you battle, the better you become at that mask. And unfortunately, it seems like she got to a point where she had made up her mind and started calling people. See, what you do is you wake up that day and you try to figure out is today the day I need to get my affairs together and say my goodbyes to everybody without saying goodbye. They don't know I'm saying goodbye, but I know. And many times when you get to that point, there's nothing nobody can do about that. Nobody can stop it, not even you. And a lot of people battle through and get past it. And, and to y'all, I say, alhamdulillah, some people don't. Here's the other thing. Here's, here's my real perspective. The reason why this lady couldn't believe that this young lady had done this to herself is because she was living the black woman's dream. She was a mixed chick, which means her father was white. Okay. Chesley Chris's father's white. So she's mixed chick, light skin, good hair, beautiful, can have any man, body, right, money, some fame, some notoriety, some talent. She's being recognized for how beautiful she is, how intelligent she is, and all of these things. She's successful, quote unquote. 
and she had all of those pictures and black women like to believe the, the lies that are on social media because for all intents and purposes, Chesley was lying. That was part of her mask. Those pictures and where she's vacationing and all that kind of stuff. She's on the beach one day and she's at dinner the next day. That, that's part of the mask. That's the intricate mask that a person who's suffering from major depression puts together so that they look normal from every aspect. The reality is on the inside, it's not normal at all. If it is, and it's not even a shameful, they, they not, we not so much with shame, we isolated. And there's a difference when you just feel alone in a, in a world full of people and feel like, Nobody else has ever gone through this but you. I'm here to tell people who are listening, there are people who are going through it, who do get exactly what you're going through. It's not even unique. Please get help. Please get as much help as you can. Don't let that voice tell you you can't get help and that there is no help because there is. Other people get help and they be spiraled too at that brink. You're not the only person thinking about it. There have been people to get to that point and they got beyond that point and lived and became more healthier mentally and emotionally. I'm one of them. But I still know that demon. I'm never going to forget that fight. I'm never going to forget that fight. I'm never going to not know that fight. And I'm never going to not have empathy for those who have that fight. It's nothing simple about it. She was so-called living the high life. I'm sorry to go a minute or two beyond the time that I typically do. She's living a high life, so there's no way possible that she could be miserable on the inside. But depression is a spiritual thing, not an external thing. There's no amount of money, fame, or beauty that's going to... That, that, influences that or makes it go away it's spiritual and unfortunately we live in a time and in a place where where our spirit is diminished and it has no truth and more and more people are going to start doing this unfortunately because the misery anyway sound off in the comment section let me know what you think like share subscribe to the channel uh, if you have not, once again, I'm your host of Crimson Cure, and this was my perspective. Bye-bye, Crimson Ice. Hey, guys. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. And if you've got more to say on the topic, leave a comment down below. Also, don't forget to support our sponsor who so graciously supports this channel by clicking the description box and the link for A-Game at agameherbal.com. You can go ahead and get a 10% discount off of your next purchase using the code Kendra10. This has been yet another Crimson Cure production and I'll catch you guys on the next one.